bringing it. We are back, but I'm not even going to bother trying to point because there's two other people on the screen and I will 100% F that up. So uh, welcome back, folks. Here we are again for another monthly episode of whatever it is we like to talk about. Today, we're going to talk about what is recovery like to look at the screen. What does recovery look and feel like? <laughs> Me as too. always by Lauren Rosen. You guys know Lauren by now. She's a practicing therapist in uh, LA, in the LA area, specializing in anxiety and anxiety disorder and OCD. And then I don't know if you could see it below us. I guess it's the same for everybody. Is Kelly Frankie, otherwise known as the OCD therapist on Instagram. Hey, Cal. Hi. Thanks awesome. for having me on. You're very welcome. You're welcome anytime. So anyway. And, so, today, yeah. and for anyone who's just who's joining us from our pages, we always have to give, give a shout to our, our fearless leader here. Uh, the one, the only Drew Linsalata, who is the dot anxious dot truth. Um, but yeah, most, most people know you because of course this is your channel. So, but if you're joining right. for Minor Kelly's, he's fantastic. Yeah, Check okay. him out. You guys could post it on your YouTube or whatever too. We'll do that. That's fantastic. True. I have Bye. with some of them. Oh, cool. Okay. Wow. So I'll put everybody's names up on the screen later on so you guys could follow along with these two uh, fabulous human beings. Today's topic, if you choose to accept it, is what does recovery look and feel like? So maybe we should let Kelly start as our, as our honored guest. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you're just going to disappear for a half hour. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we kind of talked about this last week um, in our own podcast. And I think it's really important to establish the fact that people think recovery means I'm not going to have intrusive thoughts and I'm not going to feel anxious. So out of the gates, just establishing that is that recovery will include intrusive thoughts and it will include anxiety. And that we really measure recovery based on how you're responding to those things. So, yeah. and that's so. pretty common, I think, in the OCD world. Like, I'm never going to have these thoughts again, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, that depends. Are you still going to be alive? Because as long as you're alive, you're probably still having the thoughts. Lots of them, actually. Right. Yeah. So there's a then I'll go lead right into a question then, <clears throat> because I think we've acknowledged this, and most of the time we do talk about it. All human brains create what for some people become really sticky and, and nasty and scary thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that that 13,000 volt bus bar is right there. I could just grab that. I've had that thought like on old construction sites when I was in architecture or right. I could just step off the top of the Trump International Plaza, 92 stories in the air. I could do that. I mean, you could. You have right. two legs that work. And what if I decided to do that right now. Mm hmm. So is it correct in, to, in saying that like part of that is like you may have because all, all humans have those kind of thoughts from time to time? They're not, they don't go away forever. No, I think you certainly can, it, through treatment, I think you certainly can reduce the intensity and the amount. But I would say don't go into it with the goal of that being in the forefront. It's rather of like a side effect of learning how to manage anxiety. I don't know, Lauren, if you want to say it in a different way. Yeah, I, I think it completely connects to the first point that you were talking about in, in that we're trying to develop a different relationship with these thoughts, that it's it's really down uh, recovery. Instead of looking like no thoughts, no feelings, unfortunately, well, fortunately, depending, um, mm -hmm. is that it's about willingness and how willing are you to have these experiences? Because the problem isn't the experiences. It's the fact that we're so bound to not having them, like that this is the only way life can be good, um, which gets us all stuck trying to get rid of them with all sorts of behaviors, whether that's we're talking about an agoraphobia you know, not leaving your home, or we're talking about ruminating endlessly about whether or not you want to murder your family in yeah. Harmo City. Yep. Makes sense. I get asked all the time in, my, in sort of my thing, do you ever have panic attacks? Like, do you have, a, and, and I'll say, like, I don't know, maybe once a year I might have a panic attack. And some people will say, well, you're not, you're not recovered. That's oh, you're no, not, no, sir. Not, <laughs> and how could you be saying you're not recovered? Like, no, 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 no. When did I ever say that you would never, ever, ever have a panic attack? I know they want to hear that. Yeah. But it's one of the hardest things for me to convey is, well, then how could you say you're recovered? And I will say, because I simply don't care if I have a panic attack or not. Yes. Would you say the same in your? It's similar to like when people say, how do you stop a panic attack? You don't. <laughs> you, you, you don't. actually don't. You go right through that sucker. Yeah. And, and the same is true with recovery is like, we're not stopping this experience. We're just moving through it. Yeah. 
And, and you said, I simply don't care. That's it. It's like, we go, cool. We'll find out. What sucks about that. I always find is you can't deny that the happy secondary effect of that is when you kind of don't care, then they sort of don't happen. It's just not right. guaranteed that they will never happen. Correct. Yeah. Well, and the more that you want them not to happen, the less that that, that experience of accepting them and therefore them becoming less frequent will happen. Yes. Yeah. I actually had it explained to me in an interesting way once, which is that they, it's not that they become less frequent per se. It's that when they come up, they don't register for you because you're not bothered by them, which I'm sure it's some sort of balance between those two things. But isn't that an interesting way to think about it? It's like, mm -hmm. because of what you were saying that like when they do come up, it doesn't matter to you anymore that that is just like it's it's a non-event and so your recollection over time is that they're just not happening right that would be the case if somebody is dealing with intrusive thoughts you think or ocd related or compulsions and i also think related to anxiety thoughts and other disorders uh, and, right it all it's all kind of the same we've talked about this you and i before like yeah the distinction right. there's a lot yeah mm-hmm so I, I like to say, it was in a conversation yesterday with somebody who would say, I'm pretty much about 95% recovered. And he wound up in a situation, and it's actually next week's podcast, that, oh boy, you guys, it's in the past if you're watching this. But <laughs> anyway, he was triggered, you know, air quotes, triggered by a thing that he saw on the news, which brought him back to one of his primary fears. Mm -hmm. And he described it so well as like the time that that would have taken a week away from my life in the past. Yeah. This time it took like a 30 minutes that's it. That's what we want to hear. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. where we're like, yes, recovery is happening. This is fantastic. See how he responded. And even just how he um, experienced it and explained it, it wasn't like, oh, I'm so frustrated that it took me this long. He framed it as it used to be this. Look how far I've come. Look yeah. what I can do. So a lot of it is attitude, you know? And an acceptance of like, well, why wouldn't I be afraid of that? It's a, you know, that's a disturbing thing to see happen to of somebody. Course. I'm going to have a human reaction to that. All right. Maybe my reaction's a little stronger than other people's would, but I was out of it in 30 or 45 minutes. I was good to go again. Right. Yeah. Which I think that's what recovery to me, that's what it looks like. My personal recovery looks like that. I like this people ask, how could you not care? Well, I do care, but I, I care for just a few seconds <laughs> for six months in a row. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's all on the pivot, right? It's all in how quickly you maneuver back to acceptance as opposed to resistance. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's true. I don't know. We're building that muscle. But then, okay, so, th so there's that piece of recovery, like what recovery actually looks like is that you're going to have thoughts, you're going to have feelings. What about the element of doing recovery perfectly? Because Ooh. I think that that often comes up for people as like, well, if I'm, if I'm really in recovery, then I'm never going to do a compulsion or safety behavior, which I don't know. I don't know about you two. Well, I know, I think I know about you two. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, she yeah. definitely can speak for me. I can, de <laughs> I know, I know her. Uh, I'm pretty sure I, I have a feeling, but uh, nobody does it perfectly. I've yet mm -hmm. to see a client do it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think if you try to be so vigilant that you're doing it like without compulsions or without safety behaviors, then it becomes another point of fixation. Yes. It becomes the obsessing on obsessing, obsessing on the fact that I'm having, you know, another intrusive thought instead of saying, oh, wow, I'm getting less stuck in the content. So they're just like um, tracking every single thing that happens and how intense it was and how long it lasted is like, well, that's a surefire way to get more stuck. Mm. That's mm -hmm. that, that checking and evaluation mechanism that always keeps looping back to say, is it working? Is it working? Right. Is it working? Yes. Working? Oh yeah. 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 And yeah. if it doesn't, if I don't judge it as working, then I'm going to question whether I did it right. What can I what can I do different? What did I do wrong? I hear that all the time. Oh yeah. Wrong? Like, I don't know, dude, you, you described a textbook response. What was wrong in that? Mm -hmm. I, every day I see that. Well, and the yeah. expectation that if I did it the way my therapist taught me how to do it and it still doesn't change, then what does that mean? Mm. Like normally it works, like it quote unquote works. Like normally it doesn't bother me or it'll eventually go down. How come two days later I'm still upset by it? Mm. same respond the same protocol 
right? People are always looking for, it should look this way. And there's like this exact piece of how to do it. Yet humans and their daily living is so complex. It's hard to measure that. I mean, I gotta say when you're under stress, Lauren, like, you know, the shit is hitting the fan. It, it's not as easy to do it. So every no. day, Drew, is that what you're saying? I mean, like every day? Oh, you mean just like the last day? Is that what you're talking about? Every Monday. single day. That's all you had yeah. to say. Just every day. That's all you had to say. It's yeah. Be the possible environment. That's all you had to say. Mm -hmm. um. Well, and that's the thing is, it's like, how can I use this to get rid of anxiety? And that's where, okay, so we've been talking about, mm -hmm. I'm not bothered by this, but isn't it that we get better at being bothered? Mm -hmm. Right. Getting right. more comfortable in the discomfort of it. Oh, that's a good question. Get Well, and we've done this, that the whole like, well, let's do a little guru, you know, soundbite here. It's like, it's not, it's not getting, it's not, not feeling it's getting better at feeling. Right? Yes. When we worked that out. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Nice. And I find myself in that sometimes when I'm having a particularly, I bite off more than I could chew. The typical for me, I'm not sleeping. I'm taking on a million projects and I'll feel that sometimes, but I, can, I would hope you would. Yeah, I can. Right. I'm not a robot. Like, contrary to popular belief, I have. <laughs> me, do I not bleed? Liar. Like, yeah. <laughs> Take my face off like the six million. Oh, shit. That would yeah, freak but, Matrix. Uh, <laughs> yeah, total Matrix shit. But <laughs> I will feel that. And when I do feel that, I, I can acknowledge like, oh, that's right. I, I knew I should have. I shouldn't have gone to bed at 2 a.m. Yeah. I should have said no to this project. I should have pushed the deadline out a week. I guess I'm just going to feel like this today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll do the best I can today. Well, and people who are fixated on recovery might go, well, I slept fine. I ate well. I worked out. There's no life stressors. Why in the hell do I still feel anxious? Well, because you just feel anxious. Come on. Let's go. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. It's a part of the human experience, right? Right. And I'm it's also part of the human, sorry, experience no. to figure things out, right? Like our minds are these intense problem solving machines. So it's easy to have compassion for the person that's trying to also make sense of why they feel anxious. Yeah. Yeah. That's and then we, sure. we normalize that fixing, yeah. fixing, fixing, pathologizing a negative mood or a negative thought or yeah. a negative emotion. We got to fix it. We should be able to fix that. Get out, get out of that. Mm -hmm. Why? I mean, yeah, why? I sure that would be great. But why is that our automatic response? This is the thing that we must fix. Yeah. Yeah, it's a problem. Well, because we're good problem solvers. I think that that's one of the, the one thing that anecdotally, anyway, I see across everyone with anxiety disorders is that generally they're pretty high achieving people, mm -hmm. right? And that, that they're, they've responded very well to one MO, which is, ah, there's a problem. Let's figure out how to solve it. And then there's this thing that you don't like, like a feeling. And it's like, well, ready, I, I can solve this. And I'm going to do all of that. Then you get stuck trying to solve it because you can't solve feelings. It doesn't work. No, there's no formula. Mm -mm. Yeah. And that sucks. And it's funny because one of the words that I regret, I, I used that phrase when I wrote the anxious truth, I kept saying, solve this problem. Mm. <sighs> <laughs> really, I really want to do a recall two thousand books if I can, but I can't. But I, I'm going to fix that in another. I book. worry about that myself. I like wrote, in future me, be like, will I take that language back? I've yeah. had that thought. Yeah, yeah I, I regret having written that, but I I thought of it that way at first when mm -hmm. I was struggling. I'm like oh, I can solve yeah. it. I know. Right. What to do. I know what to do. Mm -hmm. but I had to discover, like in a very real sense, I didn't know what to do at all. It was that the office quote or whatever the hell it is, like. And in a real sense, I'd had no idea what to do, which is true. I had to accept the recovery looks, whatever it looks like today. And that's as good as it's going to get today. That's okay. Just right. what can I learn from today was a big part of my recovery. What can I learn from this mm -hmm. to fall tomorrow? I love that. Yeah. I think that's a very resilient building statement. It took a while to get there though. Oh yeah. 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 That was yeah, a that's a, that growth mindset. Is it? It's everything. Mm -hmm. It is. Because it's no longer about solving the problem. It's mm -hmm. about how how can I just continue to get better at navigating this problem? You yeah. Know what I mean? And accepting that these things are going to happen. I can call them problems if I want. So I could try to make them not happen. But I'm failing at that miserably. So at some point, <laughs> there's not. a, yeah, you know, to me, it was, I had to come to that realization as part of what did recovery look like? I One of the things I had to do was discover, I cannot. 
can't engineer my life. I just can't do it. It doesn't happen that way. So I do think that there is some amount of formula and that's, there are ways that you can make it worse, Mm. right? There are ways like compulsive behavior Mm. is one part of the formula. It's like, we want to, you know, reduce as much as possible. We can't get rid of it entirely, like Lauren was saying, but if you're going to spend hours a day and you're choosing to try to control it, figure it out, engage in some type of compulsive behavior, then yeah, chances are that's not contributing to how you're going to learn anything different to the next day. So there's stop looking. There's not necessarily a formula for making it better, but there sure is a formula for making it worse. Yeah. That's (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that like so not true. eating well, sleeping three hours, adding so much more stress to your plate. I'm feeling all attacked. the things we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean like every day, Kelly? Is that what you mean? Every like? day. It's everyday living. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the other piece though, right? We can't get, and this is the, like what we were saying before is that you can't get too rigid about that either because there are some people who are like, well, I'm not getting exactly eight hours of sleep. And so I'm going to have a relapse. It's like, well, okay. But if your life, if you're going out to a big party and celebrating and you stay out until three o'clock in the morning, then that's part of what life is all about. Would I advocate for you doing that consistently? Kind of like what Kelly was just saying, like, no, I'm not going to advocate for people doing that or not eating regularly or, you know, compulsing or doing safety behaviors on a regular basis, because generally speaking over time, that's what we're building. We're building unhealth. That's a word. (laughs) Unhealth. (laughs) Unhealth is officially a noun now. Unhealthy. You're welcome. <laughs> it's all good. Like you can cultivate your wellness or you can cu- cultivate your unwellness, right? Like that's mm-hmm. right. Essentially. Cultivate. And that, yeah. But that process of going toward recovery and away from the icky stuff would say that, well, I can be open to more experiences now mm-hmm. that like, because mm-hmm. my interpretation of them are different. Oh, I didn't sleep. I only slept four hours last night. I'm going to be a mess tomorrow. Right. As opposed to, oh, I'm going to that concert and I, I'm going to be dragging tomorrow, but it's so worth it. So how come that's okay? Mm. But the other side isn't okay. So I do you guys find that you your experience is a little wider and richer? Like, yeah, it's okay. I can go toward this thing I would have never allowed. Never. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think about the conference in Denver where Lauren and I presented it way too many Oh my God. Uh, and <laughs> presenting, is that what you're going to call it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Giving Did, talk to <laughs> big rooms with people. I miss No, it. I want to call it pull a Drew because we didn't get enough sleep <laughs> and, we, <laughs> and we worked our asses off. <laughs> right, right. It was, um, yeah, I mean, not eating enough food because it was like back to back to back. Um, not sleeping, like at some point at five o'clock every day, we would start laughing hysterically, like just like insanity, like really, like it was true, like no reason. We couldn't stop. And we couldn't stop. And it was awful and embarrassing, but whatever. But it was all the things. Yeah. yeah, Like I got home and I had a little bit of a rebound. Like I feel like I had a little more intrusive thoughts. I was feeling a little more anxious and I was like, oh, like, that's okay. Like, I, of course, that's going to happen after I spread myself so thin that I was barely alive, but it was totally worth it. So it's reframing it in that way, for sure. I find it amazing because uh, while I was not at that conference, I, I am in touch with enough people who were, be it clinicians, researchers, advocates, people who are still suffering and in recovery, who all had the same story. I got to go to the next one because clearly it's a good time. Everybody dragged themselves by their lips out of that conference and barely made it home. <laughs> so, so many, this large number of people who were insistent on maintaining control and box and keeping it I all know. together I'll for let three it days, just like, hey, whatever happens, happens. And it was okay. Yeah. Nobody died. Nobody Not died. Not to my knowledge. No of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> but I think that in, in addition to that, in addition to just feeling totally exhausted after that, I, I think I can speak for Kelly as well as myself that, and this is with the podcast too. I never got up in front of people and spoke publicly before. Didn't like it. Made, made me anxious. Makes me anxious sometimes, right? Lots of social anxiety, like, oh, what are they thinking? And like the fear of judgment. 
and really being willing to go toward that, even though it's not like a, it, it wasn't ever particularly debilitating for me that, and just sort of under the umbrella of what does recovery really look like? It's seeing these opportunities and going, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to push myself a little bit harder. I'm going to yeah. do the thing because that's what I care about. That's um, true. And now, you know, even though I am uncomfortable, I'm I'm pretty good at being uncomfortable in the service of talking about this stuff. And and hopefully it helps a person or two, you know? I would have never known. You're great on camera. I know. It's wild, but she does get nervous, as do I. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, agreed. It's like you're you're more willing to an experience that normally you would avoid for sure. And that's part of what recovery looks like. Things get broader. Like experiences get wider, like there's less restrictions. So people ask me, well, does that, you know, is it only, I always like to try to talk about recovery in terms of how it starts to look more like just life and less like recovery. You stop mm. seeing the word yeah. after a while. Good point. Mm -hmm. They only want to know about the anxiety part of my life. I'm like, uh -huh. that's not a part of my life anymore. Let's just talk about my life. You know, I travel, I go to things. I'm like, I don't have any restrictions here. I never, I never make my decisions based on how I feel. Well, mm. yes, I'm legit sick or whatever. But so that's really important. Recovery looks like you stop asking about recovery to a certain extent. Yes. So true. So true. I saw, I saw a post about that actually recently. Um, Shannon, I think is her name, a healthy push. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about on Instagram um, said something about like about just that. I thought it was so on point because essentially instead of focusing on how do I feel better? How do I get better? It really comes down to how do I live my life? And if, if people start to focus on that and less on the anxiety, the anxiety gets smaller and smaller anyway, just because it's not the focal point. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Do you guys find as you went through it or as your clients go through it, that at first it's all recovery all mm -hmm. the time. And then over time that balance begins to shift and it becomes, there's an almost an even mix. And at some point recovery starts to kind of tail off and it just becomes life. And you don't know when it happened for me mm -hmm. and for most of my community, like, wait, when did I, when did this happen? I don't know when it happened. There was no moment. Just yeah. Happened. I see it when my clients, we stop talking about OCD and we start talking about like the, their life, like Lauren was just saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is a great thing. It is a great thing. Yeah. It Do you ever have to great. point it out to somebody? Or is that? Um, usually, usually I'll be like, Hey, look at all this work you did. That's so incredible. There's usually this moment. That's this, an epiphany moment. That's either brought to the, the client will bring it up or I will notice it. And I'll be like, wow, like I was just reflecting on how, when you first came in here, this is what you were doing. And now here you are telling me that you're going, applying to colleges and you're in an intimate relationship and you got your license and, you know, kind of listing how far these things that were so something they would thought they would never be able to do. And here they are talking about it as if they were just anybody on the street. It's, yeah. it's really cool when you yeah, see it like that. Amazing. Or when other life problems can be problems. Yes. Like, oh, work is killing me. My husband's being the pain in the butt. My, the kids are making me crazy. Like, you know, you didn't care about that a year ago. No. Mm -hmm. And now you have a whole different skill set to even deal with that stuff, right? True. Yeah. Um, so that when your husband's pissing you off, you can sort of val like go back to what, what kind of a life do I want to live? What kind of person do I want to be? Instead of like, how do I, you know, get, uh, release this feeling of frustration I'm having by yelling at him? Mm hmm. No Not that dear. I know anything, <laughs> anything about this. Biggest goalie in the NHL. Enough with that. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah. husband has aspirations to become a, an NHL goalie yeah. now. <laughs> um, but no, it's, yeah, it's, it's remarkable. But I think what, what I appreciate about what both of you are saying is that, yes, there's this, there's these moments where it comes into stark relief, the difference. And at the same token, it's this slow accrual over time mm -hmm. that one day you make this choice and then the next day you make this choice. And then over time, this becomes the norm instead of this. But it is in those in those small moment by moment choices mm -hmm. um, that we that we build our recovery. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, wait a second. We're not we're not focused on that anymore. Wow. Right. 
you just preemptively answered my next question, which was going to be, I know that people watching are going to say, but how can I possibly get to the point where I don't care? That's always the question at the end of these. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. I can't wait to get there, but how can I possibly do that? And I think Lauren just answered it. Tiny moment by yeah. tiny moment, right? Acceptance of every of these little moments. And yeah. people tend to like minimize them as well. It's like, well, I did all these awful, like I did all these compulsions and blah, blah, blah. But then as the session goes on, they're like, I did this, I did that. I'm like, wait, hold on. Wait, <laughs> like, why did we just we blow the lead. past that? Yeah, like yeah. you buried the lead. That's exactly it. It's a great way of putting it. It's like, forget all the other stuff. All right, forget it. Let's talk about the stuff you did do because those matter. Like those tiny things are actually what's getting you closer to where you want to be. And people don't realize that. It's so, it's so important. Every step is a big step. Mm-hmm. And like building the foundation of a house, like if you keep sort of sweeping it away every single mm -hmm. time, like, no, that's nothing, right? You never yeah, build the house. All these compulsions. Oh, okay. We'll yeah. work on that. But you did yeah. all these other things uh -huh. too. Yeah. Those are some good bricks. You leave them there. Yeah. Don't you yeah. touch those bricks. <laughs> Every single time you drive a new nail, you stand back and like, ah, damn it. It's not a house. Right. You right. Drive nails. Like drive <laughs> nails. I like where we're going with this. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, Absolutely. You, yeah. Damn it. It's still not a house. No, it's not. But it's one nail closer to a house. So keep driving nails. Yeah, breaks. celebrate, be proud of yourself for every step and keep yeah. going and not stop. Don't stop building when you you hit a block in the road. Yeah. How do you deal with that? And you like when you're working with people, Drew, like you see the, people. Well, I see it's same thing. I mean, it's so funny because clearly we're, we might be in different environments, but the story is this. You buried the lead. It was in my head <laughs> when you said it, Lauren. Like, because <laughs> I see it all the time. People will mm -hmm. rush into like my Facebook group and like, I did that. They'll give me a big, long litany of all these amazing things that they accomplished say, over the weekend. Oh my God, I went to a birthday party and I went to the park with my kids. And it's, these are like crazy things they would have never yeah. done three months ago, but then they come to, but then I got home and I, you know, I started thinking that I was really anxious and then I didn't, you know, I got stuck on that and I couldn't get rid of that thought. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa hang on, stop. You could have yes. stopped. Yes. Like, look at that. Yeah. 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 So I, I think it's a universal experience. We mm -hmm. don't give ourselves enough credit and, we're too close to it to see the wins. And I think we're emotionally invested in the, in the suffering. We're not emotionally invested in the win. So mm -hmm. we have that negative bias of like, I'm going to only focus. It's like customer service. Well, you know what? No one goes to therapy just because they- Which is a nightmare, by the way. That's true. But when, you know, in my, my life as in technology companies, I used to tell my people that were doing customer service, like no one calls us to say, I love you, man. They only call yeah. us when something <laughs> Mm -hmm. like no one goes to see you guys in your office because you're just cool. I mean, you are, but that's not where they go. Nobody goes no. to your Facebook group because you're just having a great day and want to tell us about it. Sometimes. No. Yeah. But so they'll bury the lead 100%. Yeah. Old. Yeah. Yeah. Highlighting each of them is so important. Like what you were saying, Kelly, like each yeah. and every one of them is just, hey, but look at what you did well. Look at. Yeah. And I think that's why it's really important to have friends if you don't have therapy and you don't have a therapist who can point those out to have support in some way or even like a Facebook group or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, Lauren's my best friend. And there I can tell you right now there are times where I didn't see certain things and she's like, oh, like, I'm so proud of you that you did this. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, I did do oh. that. <laughs> So hang on, cut out. I did it. Kind of a badass. Yeah. <laughs> now that you mentioned it. <laughs> You're a hundred percent right. Yeah. That's so interesting though, because that's one of the ways you get to, you know, we're talking about what does recovery look and feel like, but one of the ways you get there sometimes is we do have to trust the people around us, either the people that came before mm -hmm. us on the path or the, you yeah. know, our friends, our family, whoever, our professional helpers, because we can't see it or oh we can't gosh. believe it. So people... I don't know. That's a different topic altogether. It's People so say, true. I just can't seem to get my brain to believe this. I know it won't until you do it. The belief mm -hmm. comes after. So you'll have to use my belief for now. Borrow mine. Mm -hmm. Borrow mine. Yeah. Borrow mine. Like trust that all 5,000 of us are not sending you to doom. Like, yeah. Or would we? Yeah. 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 Does that, I don't know if that makes any sense. To that's you. Oh, 100%. Yeah. That's how. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's such a leap of faith required. I remember my own therapist telling me like, you're going to just have, you're just going to have to trust me on this. Yeah. Mine too. And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> trust who, what now? 
Um, <laughs> mm, I don't know. About trust? That. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but there's doubt. It's like, okay, let there be doubt, you know? Um, actually, yeah, to your point, Drew, I think we could do a whole other thing talking about that, that leap. Maybe mm-hmm. that's next month, like the collective brain of recovery, which we don't. And Kelly, you're welcome mm-hmm. all the time. I mean, are you going to make a regular thing? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, we just need another just element. Nice I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we need a picture of like term- as long as so. <laughs> as long as we can talk about Lebowski a little bit. Sure, <laughs> that's the next. Uh, I literally wrote. I, I write that morning newsletter. I wrote an entire episode, an entire morning newsletter about what the big Lebowski teaches of us, teaches us about recovery. So that was. Oh my gosh! I need that- to see it. I'll, I'll send you the link for sure. Are you kidding me? I was at, yeah, Lauren's I face, I can see her face like laughing at my face. Like she's just like, oh, totally, totally so excited right now. So good. Well, yeah. it's funny because as you were talking about nihilism, I was like, oh, that would be like, uh, you know, it, before the the uh, chat and how Lebowski is a nihilist, it, it sort of mm-hmm. has that flavor of like, I don't care, right? Like, oh, right. all right. Well, that's happening. <laughs> that's totally. Yeah, the the dude was, is teaching us about recovery. Really. Interestingly, in that situation, and we'll we'll talk about it next month. Walter, <laughs> Walter, sure the hot-headed guy was the was the voice of recovery. Yeah, the dude, they're gonna kill that poor woman. They're gonna kill yeah. her after they screwed up the, the drop. Her life is in your hands. Too. Right, relax, dude. Nothing is aft. Like that's just yeah. I even put the, the <laughs> yeah. sound clip in it. It was great. so I'll send you the link. <laughs> I can help myself. This is how I have my fun. But, He's like, uh, I'm calm. So I'm so, I'm calm. <laughs> Calmer than you are. <laughs> Calmer than you are. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, oh, I found so myself good. a fellow Lebowski person. It's rare. I just, I'm going to say something. It's rare to find a woman that can quote it line for line. So you're, you're welcome back all the time. Watch this one. She's going to take your chair, Lauren. Yeah. I like no. it. Go do it. <laughs> I will say we have to find a nature element for Kelly to have because for some reason we became oh. fire and ice uh, mm-hmm. our disco group our recovery disco group that I don't know why um, so we need like earth wind power we're going to be a captain planet is basically oh. what I'm saying Some sort of power rangers thing going on <laughs> yes oh I love that so I don't know Kelly's face when you mentioned pow- fire and ice was like, wait, nobody told me this. I wouldn't. Yeah, I was like, I feel like I've missed out on so many cool things right now. I, I wouldn't come if you tell me. Um, water. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. It's the Wonder Twins, but with a strange third wheel. It doesn't. <laughs> I love I that. Think- I want to be the strange third wheel. That's great. Good. Um, I like so it. We support you in any way we can, Kel. Thanks. Thanks. All right, so maybe like, next time we'll talk about maybe the hive mind, the recovery hive mind, when you have to trust yeah. the hive mind because you can't trust yourself. But mm, Love it. Anyway, love all right, it. we're out. 32 minutes. It's about as far as we want to go. Thank you. Okay. Everybody. Appreciate you guys. Yay. Let me put you guys up on the screen. This is how you get to Lauren. She is oh. at the obsessive mind on Instagram. This is how you get to Kelly at the OCD therapist. And Not lastly. The OCD therapist too. Like you were the first one, man. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like Bam. self-proclaiming. <laughs> the, the OCD therapist, not an, not an OCD therapist. It's <laughs> hard to find a handle. Yeah. That. That's why it I have is. periods in mind. Some dude already yes. the truth without the dots. There's Drew. There's a How lot dare more followers than we used to. So. <laughs> anyway. And there is Drew. Go check him out. The Anxious Truth. He's He's got, he knows it, The Anxious Truth. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do? Anyway, yeah. so thanks for coming by, guys. This will stay up on my YouTube channel. So if you keep commenting, I will answer. And if I have to drag these two lovely humans back in to answer some comments, maybe I will do that. But otherwise, we'll see you next month, as always. TTFN. Adios. TT.